Hello, this is Nick from Breaker Press Games, and today I want to talk about my DCC Open Table campaign. Alright, so... Uh, those that have followed the channel for a while may have already seen my 10 tips for running a successful open table campaign. And that was recorded when I was about seven sessions in, six, seven sessions in. And now I am eight months and 18 sessions in. And so I wanted to uh, uh, kind of revisit uh, that uh, video and talk about some of the things that, uh, you know, have proven time and time again to consistently bring results. So that being said, before we get into it, I want to talk about how you can support Breaker Press Games uh, and the work that I'm doing here. First and foremost, uh, you can support us by buying things through our web store, the Breaker Press uh, Store Envy. You can go to Goodman Games and order from their web store. You can go to Drive Through RPG, Exalted Funeral, Noble Knight Games. Uh, all of these places all offer, and itch.io, uh, all these places offer Breaker Press content. You also can um, support me on Patreon. Uh, every month I release something to my Patreon backers, uh, both in PDF form and uh, in the uh, form of something physical that gets mailed to your house every month. Uh, this month uh, was Halo of Flies, a pamphlet about Astol the Wanderer. Uh, the uh, uh, head of, or I should say mastermind, not the head, but the mastermind of the Orange Coven uh, in Stenard. And so this pamphlet, uh, the name may sound familiar because Halo of Flies was the name of an article in Rabid Dogs. Uh, I kept the stat block the same, but I gave a bunch of new guidance on how to use Astel the Wanderer in your games. Uh, brand new philosophical discussion uh, because his whole point is to be this like, uh, manipulative demagogue and so uh, there's some uh, really great things to you know kind of like move your your pcs uh and your players away from lawful uh, uh you know alignment and towards chaos um even though they don't mean to um and so uh there's also an additional like uh, cabin map uh, so if you want to sit the players down or the PCs down and have a little fireside chat with Astel, um, there's a place that you can stick him. Uh, and so, yeah, this is a, uh, a great little bit of content. Um, and this was the June Patreon reward. In fact, if you become a member in June, I have extra copies of the Icon Bearer, which was the May Patreon reward. Uh, and so if you become a member in June at $5 and above, I will send you both. Uh, so, uh, please consider that. So that being said, let's talk about my open table campaign. And so, uh, as I said, I'm 18 sessions in eight months, uh, at least 23 character deaths, uh, because I've got a stack of all of the, uh, the dead PCs, uh, or at least most of them. But I want to talk about the things that, uh, uh, have shown time and time again to be consistent. Now, that being said, I stand by everything that I said in the 10 tips uh, to a successful open table campaign. And if you have not watched that video and it's something that you're considering, go check it out. Uh, because, uh, yeah, it's it's all, uh, you know, banging advice. That being said, here are some things that uh, I really wanted to highlight again. So... Uh, first and foremost is unwavering consistency. So, uh, as I mentioned in that video, I started with uh, running a, uh, a session every other Wednesday. And that, that every other Wednesday session has stayed consistent since November. The first, the, the, I think it was the second, the second week of November, uh, I ran a session and every two weeks, regardless of who said they were going to come, come uh, in advance, I made sure to always have a session. Now, this being an open table campaign, you need to reinforce. If you don't know what an open table campaign is, you send out invites to a bunch of people and whoever shows up, shows up. So I make sure to invite 8 to 10 people every single session because I know if I do that, at least 3 or 4 are going to show up. 
Now, one of the things that uh, I think is really interesting is I've been able to be a fly on the wall in a Discord group where I was, you know, invited to be a part of a 5e group and uh, never unsubscribed from the Discord. And I've been watching and, you know, they, they've got a core group of, you know, three or four people that, that, uh, you know, always try to play and I watch as they try to maneuver their schedules to all align. In fact, uh, this, uh, this Sunday, um, I got to watch all of the comments as somebody showed up into the discord chat and was like, Hey, I thought we were playing today. And somebody responded, I thought so too. Um, and there's that confusion because of moving, moving around dates in order to try and accommodate different people. This is why those things fail, in my opinion. Instead, you stick to a specific day, um, you know, that is is consistent every month, whether it's, you know, like the last Saturday of every month, or in my case, you know, every other Wednesday. And uh, I don't cancel that for any reason unless I am sick in the hospital. Um, I even will try to maneuver around. I've, I've made sure to maneuver around different conventions. If the convention starts on a Wednesday night um, and goes Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I will still keep my Wednesday night and just show up for the convention on Thursday. Why? Because I want to make sure that I don't break that consistency. So the one thing that I did do um, that kind of uh, uh, undermined things, you know, I want to, you know, point out when I've made mistakes, uh, there were a bunch of people, I was consistently getting six, seven people, and I was running into a situation where there were more people that wanted to play, and that's awesome. And so I was like, I got, got a little greedy, and I tried to do um, a Wednesday, Thursday, back to back every other week. And what happened was, is I ended up ultimately not like I got like one or two new people, but ultimately what happened was, is I had my seven people split into the two separate days to whichever day felt more convenient. And instead of building two separate narratives built into the same campaign setting, I ran into some of my players were so gung ho that they would show up to both. And, uh, yeah, it just became, uh, you know, I split my groups and I made, made things a little more messy. Uh, and so after two months of trying to have two sessions every other week, I decided to go back to just every other Wednesday. Uh, so that being said, let's talk about, uh, you know, I mentioned that, uh, I had some new people come. My next thing is say yes to everyone who expresses interest. If somebody expresses interest in playing at your table, say yes. If you're worried that you're going to have too many people show up, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can handle eight people. Eight people are not going to show up um, in, in all likelihood. So just say yes. And whatever happens, happens. Uh, you know, I have seen, uh, you know, at a bar, you know, <laughs> I think it was like 12 people show up for my friend Christopher Rick once. Um, but generally speaking, I have never, even though I consistently invite eight to 10 people, um, I've never had more than seven people show up. It's possible that I could, but it's unlikely. Uh, that being said, if somebody says that they send you a text, they're like, hey, I'd really like to bring a friend. Once again, say yes. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, the last time I had somebody uh, ask if they could bring a friend, actually the last two times I had somebody ask if they could bring a friend, uh, that new friend uh, that they brought became a new consistent person that comes, you know, regularly. Uh, so just say yes. And that is going to ensure that you have a constant influx of new blood because you know, invariably there are going to be people that, you know, they're especially like with the summer now, um, their lives got busier and so they can't show up as often. Um, you know, you never know what's going on in people's lives, why they might, you know, drop out for a little while and come back. Uh, so that being said, keep that new blood coming in. All right. So uh, moving on from saying yes. All right. Engage every player. This is something that I hammered on in the uh, uh, 10 tips video and I'm going to hammer on it again. You want to make sure that everybody has a good time. And part of it, making sure that everybody has a good time is moving that spotlight and keeping your players engaged. 
I've got some players that are really into, you know, heavy role play, and I've got certain uh, players that, uh, um, you know, when it comes to their their moment, they're just going to say, yeah, I think I want to do this. Um, can I do that? All right, I want to do this. And then that's their, their whole turn. Um, but what I do is, is I make sure that if uh, after they, they uh, um, you know, had their moment in the spotlight, if they go back to playing on their phone or just seem, you know, not that, uh, you know, engaged, I make sure that, you know, as I'm moving around the table, I might come back to them again because I'm going to use the comparison of my Spotify, uh, um, <laughs> my board gaming group's Spotify playlist. My board game group, uh, uh, there are some players in my board game group that uh, on the Spotify playlist, they choose all five minute songs or six minute songs i uh listen to bands that uh you know the average song length is 45 seconds to a minute and a half and so what happens is is my um time in the spotify playlist spotlight is very very uh minute so i made sure to uh add more songs to the playlist you know, every time that we would get together so that there was a greater likelihood that one of my 45 second songs would pop up in the mix. Similarly, when you've got a player that, uh, you know, has these really fast turns because they don't get into the heavy RP, just make sure that if they look distracted and there's a moment to Terry lull, call on them again, ha get their, uh, you know, their brief input and then go back to your rotation. And I think that's a great way to keep people engaged. All right, drink time. Okay, so leading off of uh, keeping people engaged, I'm gonna talk about uh, consistently planting new seeds. And this is something that I don't believe was in the 10 tips of video, um, but it does tie into keeping everybody engaged. And one of the things that I do in my campaign is at the start of every session, we do a recap and then I will insert into uh, what's happening in order to make things feel more alive something that happens. The uh, courier comes into town and uh, you know brings some news or uh, there is uh, overnight while everybody was sleeping there was a murder or a theft. And as this stuff is happening I will often plant multiple seeds. And part of planting multiple seeds is wanting to see which things your players are going to want to latch onto. And you will notice that some of your players will treat these things as pet projects. It's their personal quest. And this is great because if you make note of those things, if they miss a week, you just kind of push that quest out of the spotlight and focus on the things that the people at the table are interested in. And then when they're back, you bring it back into the spotlight. And so what I do, um, and I'm going to do a separate video talking about this, is that I actually, uh, I as I'm walking the dogs uh, the day before or the day of a session, I will be thinking about the, the different leads that I want to take uh, my PCs on and I will write on a post-it four or five little plot hooks um, or adventure seeds mini quests um, that uh, will drive the action for that session and they will be ta tailored to um, I don't actually put down the name of a specific person but I will I will put down uh, I will make sure to include uh, bullet points uh, that are hooks that I know certain players are going to want to pursue. And so that way, if they show up, I've got something to keep them engaged. If they don't show up, I can save that adventure seed for another, uh, another session. And then finally, and this is a big one, I talk about this extensively in the other video, show appreciation. Uh, make sure that your players know that they are um, not just welcome at your table, but you are excited to have them there. And how I do that is at uh, the day after the session, I make sure to send a thankful, me a th a thankful message, a thank you message to every one of my players that showed up. And uh, 
if a consistent player didn't show up, I also will give them a uh, session recap uh, just so that they know what they missed. But that, that thank you message is very important because I make sure to highlight something that happened at the session. I make sure to thank them if they brought snacks or if uh, uh, they tithed. Um, this is, I, I have a tithe box that is my DM stand. Uh, I don't use a, uh, I don't use a uh, DM screen. And uh, starting all the way at the very first session, people were like, can I put money in the box? And I was like, absolutely. Um, and so if somebody tithed and, you know, think, think of that as, you know, like a tip or money to go towards the snacks that I bought, um, you know, it's, it's their way of saying thank you to me. And so I make sure to say thank you to them because uh, showing appreciation is such an important thing. So those are five things that I feel like you need to reinforce, I needed to reinforce about uh, the success of my open table campaign. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments um, or post them on DCC Rocks. Uh, thank you for supporting indie games and indie game designers. This is Nick from Breaker Press Games signing off.